Hey everybody, Wideout here again, this time with a set of replays from the Zotac Cup number 173 final. And this time on Derelict Watcher, we've got spawning in the top right as the blue Protoss, we've got Arthur. And his opponent spawning in the bottom left as the red Protoss, we've got Trent. Both players are slightly lesser known, they're not exactly super top tier like Innovation, but they are very good players, they have been in very high profile tournaments before, so there should be very good action from this game. Now in this PvP, a lot of things might happen, uh, I always say and really do believe that PvP is the most dynamic of all the mirror matchups. I just feel like there's so many more strategies and so many deviations that either player can employ on each other. I feel that ZVZ and TVT is slightly less dynamic, but I think PvP does take the cake, and if there's a mirror matchup, I prefer PvP every time. So Trend is going for a gateway first, as well as Arthur, so very basic. Neither, play go neither player going for a simulator. And it looks like... Trend might be looking for some sort of cannon rush, possibly, but no luck there. We do have both simulators going up for Trend, as well as Arthur, so it is a mirror matchup up to the two and a half minute mark. And also looks like Arthur is going to be scouting the inside of his base, looking for some sort of proxy pylon, as well as his expansion. So both players are thinking the same thing, that the other one could pull some cheese on the other. You do have to remember that Derelict Watcher does have a wide surface area in the main, so if you want to cheese someone with a proxy cannon rush or gateways inside the base, this is definitely one of the candidates to do so. There's just so much space here. And now it looks like we do have Arthur moving across the south side of the map. I'm not sure if he's going to put down a proxy pylon, maybe hide some tech structures. Cybernetic score is coming up for both players. We have a second gateway for Trend. And there we go, Arthur does put down the proxy pylon. So what kind of hijinks is our blue Protoss up to? Now Trend is sending a probe across the map to figure out what is going on on the blue Protoss' side of town. Now Arthur, remember, only has that single gateway and Trend does have another one on the way. So Trend will have two very shortly here. And Trend is able to spot that there's not much going on in Arthur's base. Uh, so that's probably going to signal to Trend that something strange is going on. And there we go. We do have the Stargate on the south side of the map. And it looks like <laughs> Trend is reading Arthur's mind. Uh, once he went to the base, he didn't see a lot of stuff going on there. He said, oh, that's strange. I got to figure... I gotta figure this out. What's going on here? Now, the Stalker isn't gonna be able to catch it. Now, Trend's gotta check every nook and cranny. He didn't check over here, though. I mean, the Stargate could have been here, and he probably wouldn't have seen it. But he's gonna come down to the south end of the map, and he's gonna spot it. He's gonna see the Stargate even before it's finished. Oh, this is a horrible day for Arthur. Now he's committed to the Oracle. He doesn't have another play, as he was so far behind. But unfortunately, the surprise is going to be no surprise, or you might say the surprise is on Arthur and not on Trend. He's going to be getting more gateways online as well as the Stalkers are already in position to fend off that Oracle, and he has a Stargate of his own just warped in as well. And we have Phoenixes coming out of that Stargate. Now we do have a proxy pylon being set up by Trend in that possible third base expansion. Now, this might pique the interest of Arthur. Why is this probe just coming out of this area? I'm not sure if Arthur was really paying attention that much, though. Both players still on one base. And now that Oracle is unfortunately... Actually, I didn't see the Oracle. I think he canceled the Oracle. The Oracle was actually canceled. So we do have Phoenixes coming out instead. So it's going to be a Phoenix on Phoenix fight. Arthur is still being very aggressive. He's got a forward pylon here just outside the ramp to the natural to Trend's base. And Arthur is now pylon creeping up into the natural as well. And now he's attacking the pylons. 
But Strange, Trend is not going to defend this, it looks like. He's just going to wait. In fact, he's going to send a counterattack of three Zealots into the main. We'll have to see if this pays off. Now, we do have four Stalkers and three Phoenixes with a Mothership Core. Two more Stalkers will make that six against just three Stalkers of Trend. So Trend's army is not going to hold up. That Nexus Cannon has to go down. But the Mothership Core doesn't have enough energy, and it is going to blow up. So no Planetary Nexus Cannon. And now Arthur is being very aggressive here. We got a good defense here from Trent focusing down on those Phoenixes. And remember, the Time Warp is still down, so those Stalkers are going to have a tough time retreating. Now, we do have liftoffs by Phoenixes on both sides of the battlefield. Trent is focusing down on that lone Phoenix, so it looks like the Phoenix battle has been won. We do have a lot of Zealots whacking away at the probes as well in Arthur's base, but we've got more Stalkers from Trent. We got four on three. Looks like three on two, but with two more Phoenixes. And Arthur's going to tap out because he has no more units. And we also have these three Zealots just whacking away at the pylons and the probes. So good move by Trend. Instead of warping in those three Zealots to defend, he just said, you know what? I don't think you have anything in your base. I'm going to come and hit you directly at your economic line. And it worked out really well for Trend. So great strategy by trend and he's gonna win game one of this best of three we'll have to head over to game two to see who will come out on top